This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Glenn Blake fell asleep watching wrestling by Brett Irish. It was Wednesday, and things were all right, though he woke up with a headache from cheap tequila last night. And with AEW on TV, he knew the day would not be the worst, but he had no idea he'd remember today for a big first. The day Blake fell asleep watching wrestling. (laughs) Shoo! Shoo! He got his favorite supplies, burgers and edibles. Yum. He knew the Danielson Garcia match would be incredible. And maybe Tony's big announcement would slap. But the only surprise that Dynamite brought was a nap. When Blake fell asleep watching wrestling. He had little baby Winnie on him, fast asleep. <laughs> and was thinking about how to make the show better next week. When the Battle royal started, he thought, oh, this might be boring. Has there, like, ever been an interesting Battle royal ever? Come on. But by the time Red Dragon won, he was snoring. When Blake fell asleep watching wrestling. <laughs> shoo! <laughs> shoo! <laughs> shoo! Penta's Oscura entrance was insane. And that Eddie Kingston promo made Blake's thoughts on the ringer seem tame. I fucking hate those guys. The MJF promo felt like a one-man show. But my hubby was just too far into dreamland to know. When Blake fell asleep watching wrestling. So that's how I found him. When I came home from work, asleep with the baby, and this isn't a swerve, but watching that dynamite, I had a blast. (coughs) Me and Adam Cole alone together, finally at last. When Blake fell asleep, watching wrestling. Welcome in, wrestling fans. Uh, and it's another edition of The Next Pillar, your AW podcast. Um, if you'd like to support the show, uh, please visit us at uh, nextpillarew.com. And uh, also, we have our link to our mailbag there as well. So uh, don't forget to uh, send us some listener mail, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and it's been a crazy week here in Blake lands. Uh, do want to thank all of you so much, uh, for writing in. We have a nice, uh, we have a nice size mailbag for you today. And, uh, we will also have the usual dynamite preview, uh, that I didn't get to last week. And again, I'm very sorry for that. And I'll talk more a little bit about that later. Uh, so this is how we, this week's show will go. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have the mailbag first. And uh, then we'll do a kind of medium-sized dynamite preview, uh, then the usual words of wisdom, and then uh, we have a very special uh, revolution preview 
wherein uh, my wife will be joining us later uh, just to share some of her thoughts about uh, AEW and uh, just to kind of help me run down uh, this Sunday's pay-per-view. And again, you know, you, you folks listening, you know I record this on a uh, Tuesday evening, sometimes quite late. And uh, so there are some aspects of the pay-per-view that are a little bit foggy, but I also wanted to make sure I did a preview of the pay-per-view. And so I did the best that I could. So we'll see, we'll see what Tony might have to say about what I said in my preview. Um, so first off, uh, the mailbag. Uh, so it's funny, you know, cause I, I did this thing with the ringer last week, which I actually found a polarizing issue, uh, with you guys for the first time. We had uh, three people write in that absolutely hated it and uh, three people who wrote in and uh, really enjoyed it. Um, and I uh, I did mention, you know, just that I'm not going to make a habit of, you know, having a topic like that dominate a show again, uh, just because, you know, I do want you folks to listen and know more or less what you'll expect uh, each and week. Um, but, you know, reading through these, um, I can tell, you know, even the people that did like it also seem to think, you know, maybe it w- went a little too long. So, um, again, yeah, I, I will not have one topic eat the show again. So sorry about that folks. Um, and VJ wrote in, uh, gr- uh gr- always, uh, always a great, um, write in, uh, wrote in with this idea of, uh, wanting to spotlight, uh, some po- podcasts that I actually do think are good. Um, and I think that's a great idea. Um, and I know, I know all you guys listening, uh, you know, have already checked out a lot of the other voices of wrestling podcasts. Um, but I did want to just like give a specific shout out, uh, to days of thunder, uh, which, uh, you know, it's not a weekly podcast, but, um, I really love it. Um, and, uh, you know, for me just in wanting to do this, uh, you know, what I'm doing, um, better and better. Um, that podcast does a great job. Um, they do a wonderful job of calling things, you know, in the ring and recapping things actually in the ring. Um, which is something that I'm working on, you know, uh, feeling confident about that. And so for me to be able to listen to that about, uh, you know, what for me is like a weirdly, uh, sentimental thing, (laughs) which is, uh, WCW thunder. Um, and I should expand on that a little bit. You know, why Why is WCW Thunder an emotional thing for me? Um, my best friend in high school uh, was dating uh, a girl long distance. And um, she lived in Colorado at the time, you know. We're here in Portland. Uh, and uh, one of the few things, I guess, that they could find together to watch on TV where they could watch something on TV at the exact same time. This is a long time ago. Make fun of me if you need to. Um, was WCW Thunder. And so, you know, my friend uh, Micah knew that I love wrestling and wanted to talk to me about it. Um, and I remember this was during that time period where, because my interest in WCW came and went at times, uh, you know, I'll be honest. Uh, back at that, back in those days, you know, not now. It's like now I'll go back and watch Nitro and, I just can't believe how much stuff I missed at the time just because I was a legit WWF mark at the time, um, you know, as a high schooler. Um, that's why, like, and it's crazy to me. I You see these high schoolers now, you know, that are, um, you know, way more up on wrestling than I am now. Um, and I do wonder, a lot of that, you know, is access to information, but... Um, I do sometimes feel like I was a very uncool teenager uh, just when I talk to people like that. Um, But regardless, yes, WCW Thunder. uh, It was during the uh, Lance Storm uh, push uh, in WCW's history, which is like, I find the sneakily underrated thing. Um, And so I'm really looking forward, and that's obviously going to be a ways down the road, but I'm really looking forward uh, to uh, when they get to that. Um... But yeah, I just wanted to shout out that uh, podcast specifically. Um, had another listener write in uh, who did like uh, the Ringer segment, um, who had an idea which would be some kind of power rankings uh, based on wrestlers' meet and greet prices. 
Um, the FanFest email has those included. Uh, those who have photo ops of various uh, prices and special packages. Dan Housen might be contentious, but he's also $100 a ticket, just like Adam Cole, which um, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, and something that, and he may have already done some reporting on this for all I know, um, but WrestleNomics, uh, Brandon Thurston, just uh, doing tremendous reporting out there. Uh, if you want to talk about a good podcast, um, and a great reporter, uh, you know, again, like it's great reportage. A lot of what you find, you know, especially in wrestling is aggregation of one kind or another. Um, and you know, these people who are out there doing like really important reportage, uh, just shout out. <laughs> in fact, one time my wife made fun of me once cause I saw on Twitter, I forget what this even was. Oh, I think it was a bunch of graphics about the WWE in Saudi Arabia. And it was, you know, during, I was having that whole kind of ranting period about, you know, you know what it was about. Um, and I thought to myself, uh, and I just said out loud, you know, that's some great fucking reportage, which, yeah, don't say that out loud. Anyway, um, so moving on, uh, I do think uh, that there's a lot to be said for a lot of AEW wrestlers where, you know, you wonder if there's like a ceiling on them, so to speak, uh, you know, because their gimmick is goofy and, you know, that fits any number of people um, in the company. Uh, but it's very interesting because, you know, a wrestler can be really tough and great in the ring and really exciting uh, and yet not make any noise at all on, you know, where, whether it be a cameo thing or a meet and greet price or, uh, you know, things like that. And it's an interesting dynamic. And I think it, you know, speaks well to the current construction of the AEW roster where you do have, um, you know, this, these handful of personalities. And then, yeah, a lot of wrestlers that are you know, really integral to the nuts and bolts of AEW, but maybe would not want someone to like have them do a cameo for their wife's birthday or what have you. Um, so yeah, uh, just, just a nice example of, you know, just what the readers do bring to the show. Um, and I'm very appreciative. Um, something I was trying to, cause there's this like shoot thing that is like basically just cameo for wrestlers. Um, and I just wonder like, does anyone remember that WWE social network like tout? It was like the WWE Elo, basically. Um, anyway, it's just a random thing that came to mind. Um, Justice, which that's a great name, um, wants to know uh, just about AEW uh, to Portland. Uh, just this announcement of um, AEW coming to you know Los Angeles. You know I'm pretty obviously you know it's right in the show description of portland native proud portland native um and yeah uh it it does you know bode well you know that they are headed out west that dynamite that was just announced uh you know for la and they're also doing a show um in ontario uh so yeah is AEW coming to portland uh i mean i would obviously i would like to think so i i just you know being a longtime portlander uh, we tend to be skipped for things, you know, fairly often, uh, just, you know, kind of anecdotally here, uh, I'm going to be flying to Oakland here, uh, on the 18th of March, uh, to go down to see a new edition just because that was the closest, my closest city that I could go see new edition, you know, here up in Portland. Um, and so as a longtime Portlander, I'm used to being skipped for things, you know, recently, um, Anytime the All-Star game is somewhere like Cleveland, of course, people hear like, how can Cleveland have an All-Star game? And we've never had an All-Star game. Uh, there's just certain things where it, when you're in a town like Portland, uh, most of the time you'll get to see something, but sometimes you won't. Um, and I would not be surprised if, you know, they announce these AEW shows and it's, uh, you know, Seattle and Spokane or, you know, I... I do wonder, you know, just because they do sometimes tend to avoid running the same places that WWE does. And WWE, WWE was just here. Uh, and the Blazers do own both Memorial Coliseum and the Rose Garden. Um, but, I, again, I'm just not sure. 
uh, that's something, again, speaking of reportage, I would love to know more about just the nuts and bolts of um, this is, you know, what I should do is just find somebody that would know and have them come on the show. Uh, and that's kind of the, con that's kind of where the content of the show is going. It's just going to take me some time to get there. Um, cause at this point you're probably realizing like that I'm not an expert about any number of things. Um, but, uh, I know how to find them and I will start finding them and pulling them in the show for, exactly for a, for a question just like this. Uh, just because, it is interesting, you know, just some of these venues. I forgot to talk about this on air, but just how cool that they did uh, Boardwalk Hall in, um, you know, Asbury Park. I'm a huge Springsteen fan. And, uh, yeah, just the thoughts of, you know, seeing wrestling somewhere like that is really cool. And the thing about Oregon and Washington is that we do have some really cool, really unique venues. Um, you know, especially if you look at some of the amphitheaters you know, in this area where they've done some things with amphitheaters. Uh, I just, you know, so in a perfect world, where would I see AAW? It would be in the Memorial Coliseum. Um, and that's because, and I went and looked this up. Uh, I actually saw a house show at the Memorial Coliseum uh, in 1988. Uh, the main event was uh, Hulk Hogan defeated uh, the Big Voss Band. Um, interestingly enough, Roddy Piper was not on this particular card, but, uh, I do have a great Roddy Piper story, which I'll tell it just in a minute here. Um, but yeah, I did some digging on this and, you know, here I am four years old getting to see, uh, and you know, of course I would never want to watch Hulk Hogan wrestle the big boss band today, but, uh, at four years old, you know, that was the peak of that rock and wrestling stuff, you know? Um, or the, the beginning of it, I guess I should say, since it was 88. Um, but Hulk Hogan was very much already Hulk Hogan at that time. And looking back on it, you know, I'm pretty hard on my dad, which, you know, you guys may have heard, you know, when I was talking about that situation last week. Uh, but how cool of him to take me to see that, uh, you know, especially looking back on it. Uh, Roddy Piper. So, uh, yeah, Roddy Piper you know, is a, is a local legend here and it really can't be overstated. Uh, and again, I'm not going to have a topic like this, take up the whole show, but I very easily could talk about just the history of Portland wrestling, not the, not just the company, but just the presence of wrestling, professional wrestling in Portland, Oregon. Um, especially, you know, my family, uh, you know, we all grew up here on the West side suburbs, and it was massively popular. Like we're talking like TV ratings that were, you know, what you would think a Blazer game or a, a Timbers game would pull in. Uh, and sometimes more, you know, depending on the year. Uh, and just how iconic a lot of those Portland wrestling guys were and always will be around town. Uh, my cousin worked at a grocery store. Uh, it's called Thriftway. Um, and... Uh, He's bagging groceries. All of a sudden, he realizes he's bagging Rowdy Roddy Piper's groceries. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, my cousin, you know, he wasn't a wrestling fan at the time, but was at that Memorial Coliseum show with me and loved it just as much as I did uh, when we were kids. Uh, and so he asked him, you know, are you Roddy Piper? And Roddy Piper looked at him and he pointed at his name tag. Uh, and my cousin's name was Nathan. And he says, are you Nathan Thriftway? And uh, then started laughing and was like, yeah, I'm Roddy Piper. It's nice to meet you. Da, da, da. And it's really funny because that's one of those things where like at the time, uh, him and I were both like, whoa, that is so cool, dude. Like, I can't believe Roddy Piper said that to you. But now I like look back at it. I'm like, what? What does that even mean? Like Nathan Thriftway? Like I I I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't sit as well with me uh with age, but what a what an awesome story uh just that my cousin has. Um so yeah, in in closing, I don't know if AEW will come to Portland, but that would be uh obviously would make my day. Uh and yeah, we'll see. I I definitely could see like a Seattle Spokane, Eugene, Seattle kind of situation like that. Uh, or they could look at the Tacoma Dome, uh, which, you know. Has so one more question here. Uh, hey, Blake, uh, love the music for the show, especially the last Cody thing. Uh, do you guys take requests? Uh, 
Uh, so I'll just say, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you can definitely, if you have an idea for some music that you'd want to hear on the show, uh, definitely, you know, it's next pillar, a W at gmail.com, or you can go to next pillar, a W.com and fill out the form there. Um, I think we've come up with some pretty crazy ideas so far. You know, those are, uh, you know, this week was, you know, something I, I think really unique, uh, but obviously not as, you know, musically taxing on Brett. And so I think uh, we have some exciting things in the works, I'll say, uh, for some future, uh, some future songs. But yeah, I, I would love it to hear uh, just if, if, if you have, you know, specific ideas that you'd love to hear on the show, please let me know. Um and uh, I thought I would share just a little bit about uh, a very insane idea for a musical uh, piece that I had. Um, and of course, you know, I may have taken uh, my vitamin THC that morning uh, when I came up with this. But uh, I saw on YouTube, uh, you know, the, the recommendations, there was a Jim Cornette video of him, I guess, complaining about Jay Lethal not being on TV enough, uh, which is such a weird thing to complain about. Um, like whether it's true or not, like just to, to that's that's your complaint about AEW. Uh, but in any case, I got to thinking, and uh, I would I was probably looking at my phone, and I I walked in a store, and they were playing that Men in Work song, uh, Men at Work. Uh, you know who can it be now? Uh, don't I don't know now. You know. Uh, and, uh, just immediately I had this idea of, okay, so it's going to be a cover of that, but it's going to be Jim Cornette singing, where is Jay Lethal? Um, and, uh, you may be wondering how just, wow, like you really got this far with this idea. Um, but it was really where things started to break down for me was when I realized that, uh, I would need to be really in character <laughs> to pull it off. Uh, and I just, I can't really imagine having to inhabit the mind of a Jim Cornette, you know, like you hear that guy complaining about like, Oh, it's so taxing to play like the Riddler. Like you think that guy would last like what? Three weeks is Jim Cornette, you know? Uh, so yeah, that, that never saw the sight of day, but you know, if enough of you wanted to hear it, I could maybe see if I could hit the high notes. I don't think I could. I also don't really know, like, okay, so I'm in character. Like, do I have to do a vocal impersonation? I That's that's getting a little too taxing. Uh, but, yeah, if you do have any ideas for music for the show, uh, just hit us up, nextpillarawu.com. Uh, so we'll be back in a minute. back so tonight's dynamite um really excited uh for tony khan's huge announcement and this is something that i got a question to about uh last week and i didn't get to and so i'm glad that it didn't actually happen last week so we can talk about it this week um so it kind of seems you know again just looking out there and like seeing you know what's the what's the smart money so to speak uh, you know, it does seem uh, to indicate uh, that 
uh, you know, we're going to have a streaming service, you know, involving some AEW content, which is something that uh, fans have wanted for a long time. And it's something that at least Tony's language, how he says it's, you know, it's for the fans. It's not a signing. Um, you know, some of these other kinds of uh, language would seem to indicate that, you know, it is a streaming service. I don't know if you saw this, but there was a big report about a $200 million soccer deal. Uh, soccer going to be on HBO Max. And so it would make sense, you know, hey, they're wanting to launch this sports platform. We have soccer. Like, let's take this AEW library. And I guess what I'm most excited to see is just what other things that might include in terms of other, uh, you know, wrestling companies that Tony has working relationships with and which, uh, you know, which ones might be involved in a uh, potential service like this as well. Um, also tape libraries and, uh, you know, things of that nature that Tony may have been able to have access to or acquire. And also, you know, this rumor, which I do think has some, uh, is worth considering anyway, just this idea of, you know, what if Tony Khan buys Ring of Honor and uses it, you know, essentially as, um, you know, a different separate brand or, you know, AEW developmental, AEW NXT, essentially. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, uh, you know, at, at all. Um, and it does seem like that is going to be a streaming deal announcement. Um, I also wouldn't be totally surprised if, uh, you know, if Tony's working relationship includes some other companies, if the other kind of rumored thing that's been floating around is just as travel restrictions kind of ease, uh, you know, just doing a big super show involving New Japan and Impact and uh, AW and, uh, you know, what a great opportunity to launch something like that. Um, I don't believe that Impact would be able to uh, be involved uh, with that given their current TV rights, but um, I could still see them like kind of trying to tie everything in in terms of like, you know, position AEW as this kind of steward of the wrestling community, you know, which is a, a phrase I use, you know, just because I grew up Calvinist. Uh, yeah, I didn't just grow up Protestant. I grew up Calvinist. Uh, but it is kind of, uh, and they have never said this, but it is very much Tony's vibe of like wanting to seem like the wrestling community guy. Um, and so I, you know, what more could fit into this in doing like a big super show, which, you know, we know all the AW guys would probably go over. And also, you know, having this nice streaming service, you know, that maybe some other, he can buy some tape li libraries and other things, you know, can be featured on. Um you know, including like the, the thought of, uh, you know, they could produce some documentaries involving, you know, the Owen Hart Foundation or uh, there's a lot of maybe ways where, you know, people are getting excited, you know, as I am just to have a more convenient way to watch some of those like old episodes of Dynamite and old pay-per-view matches and things of that nature. But uh, there's all kinds of things uh, that a partnership with Warner Media could uh, bring to AEW fans that would be uh exciting and i would like to see a theme uh with dynamite this week uh is kind of just like there's a lot of matches where for me the finish is just a little too obvious uh and then it's like that wwe part of your brain starts to tingle and you're like oh well maybe they should just have something shocking happen uh where it's like uh, it really puts you in a position where, uh, you know, I'm either, especially with this tag battle Royal, which is just going to take a lot of airtime. Uh, it is just like, it, it's either like, okay, so are they going to do a dumb thing and sort of us, or are they going to do the boring thing and have, uh, young bucks go over here? You know, uh, I think anytime you kind of paint yourself in a corner in this way. And of course I get it. It's a weak before the pay-per-view, I understand that it, like, you know, sometimes you just get in these situations where you have to have some matches where, um, you know, every finish is a schmoz and, um, uh, every match, you know, what is to set up the pay-per-view, which is already pre, pre pretty predetermined and obvious. Um, so I, I understand that that can be hard, you know, to just like, like, how could they just put a, you know, really quality free match on TV? Um, but, with the pay-per-view so close, you know, uh, but I, I would like to see them maybe just again, you know, vary things a little bit more. Sometimes it seems like from show to show, they kind of get into these patterns. 
Um, less obvious to me is this six man tag just with Adam Cole and Red Dragon, uh, you know, just against members of the Dark Order. Um, where I do kind of wonder, uh, you know, how they're going to want to position Adam Cole in that tag feud in terms of does it seem like he's leaning one way or another, or just like what's going on with that whole thing. Um, something else I'm curious about is that for a while, like there was a news report where they claimed the copyright for uh, Paragon, which is a phrase that Kyle O'Reilly used in one of his promos to describe, uh, you know, Red Dragon and Adam Cole. And I have not heard them use that sense. And I really kind of wonder if that was like maybe uh, it was maybe Kyle O'Reilly being like a little bit pushy, like maybe he's like, guys. And then that, that, that thing Paragon that I said was sick. Like, look, I had this logo made. This is what we're doing. Uh, and then maybe like when he's gone with the baby, like Bobby Fish is like, look, man, this is going to fucking fly. Uh, that's what I like to imagine happens. Uh, but I do wonder if at any point we will hear that Paragon name again. I don't know. Maybe it'll be after this uh, split everyone is expecting with the Young Bucks. Uh, but I just wonder. Uh, and then next, you know, uh, just... We'll see some continued thing from CM Punk and MJF, which uh, I'm going to take a break uh, and come back and just kind of pull back, just pull back a little bit and talk about for a minute uh, in just a minute here. The new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness. HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your online order or in the app, easy change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. Uh, you know, just personally here, uh, you know, we've been having a great time with HelloFresh. Um, you know, we are both busy, both working, uh, both uh, taking care of kids, uh, getting kids to and from school. Um, also, you know, keeping tabs with the latest in AEW. 
Uh, it's been great to have these HelloFresh meals uh, to rely on where I've mentioned this on the show. Cooking's a huge interest of mine. I love cooking and providing for my family in that way. But some nights it is just wonderful to have uh, some pre-made ingredients even, you know, to not use the recipes and use the pre-made in- ingredients. Even those are very convenient. Uh, but I will say that the recipes are great. Uh, you know, overall, I've been very impressed with the recipes. Uh, so, you know, you like what you hear, go to hellofresh.com slash VOW16 and use code VOW16 for up to 16 free meals and free gifts. Uh, so again, go to hellofresh.com slash VOW16 and use code VOW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So I wanted to talk uh, just a little bit more in detail about this CM Punk MJF feud. Uh, Just to pull back for a bit uh, to make things personal. Um, This feud for me uh, is really what inspired me enough, you know, to want to do this podcast, honestly, Um, because it's the first time where, you know, I saw Punk. I was obviously excited that he was back. Uh, it was kind of the first time that I could see that he might be starting to do something um, pretty special. Um, and a CM Punk uh, given, uh, you know, a lot more rope than he had in WWE. Uh, you know, I would like to see what he can come up with and uh, really document it in a way. Um, and not just CM Punk, you know. Um, this whole company, I think, is uh, really at a creative high point right now for the most part um in terms of you know satisfying uh a few different fan bases and i think that sometimes people don't realize um you know later on the show i'm gonna have uh you know my wife on who is a and we um uh like we have actual cable you know like we actually count in these ratings of you know this is a and this is an aw weekly viewer you know what do they think of the show um i really do feel like a aw here has captured an audience and there are a lot of people in the right places where they have a chance to to make some really inventive uh storylines and you know just to shout out a few that are ongoing right now uh, you know, other than this CM Punk MJF feud, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, also, this Eddie Kingston Jericho feud very quickly has become a very compelling and interesting feud. I would also say, um, you know, in terms of a, uh, a, a feud where I can't exactly remember, you know, a feud like this before uh, would be this Brian Danielson, John Moxley, uh, I guess it's a bro match is what I'm calling it. Um, where, uh, you know, where have we seen something like this before? Someone wanting to recruit someone to a stable and they have a mat. I mean, someone will probably point out any number of examples of this happening, but I'm saying for an American wrestling audience, you know, this is pretty interesting stuff. Uh, you know, particularly relative to, uh, you know, how stagnant the alternative has been, uh, for 20 years, frankly, in my opinion, uh, with some, exceptions obviously uh but you think about you know there's multiple interesting storylines there's really good 30 minute free matches on tv every week uh you know there's a lot to like about this company and first and foremost for me right now is this cm punk mjf feud uh and this feud started longer ago than people think uh this feud really started in that promo back in the fall where CM Punk, you know, identified, uh, you know, there's some bullies here in AEW and I tend, you know, I intend on, uh, you know, getting rid of them. Um, and since then, I think what's been so fascinating is what we've seen is that more often than not, uh, the bully is often CM Punk in these situations. Uh, and things went very quickly uh, with that AD Kingston feud from, um, okay, you know, who's, who do we root for here to, oh, <laughs> uh, you think about how fast, uh, you know, Eddie Kingston and a lot of that was Eddie Kingston, uh, frankly, um, which is why that was such, you know, some feuds are short and they leave you wanting more. 
And at first, that's how I felt about that Punk Kingston feud. But now, when I look back on that Punk Kingston feud, that was a great short feud and one that I think people will always, you know, really fondly remember. Um, and that great match that they had as well. Uh, but I will say, you know, with this MJF feud, uh, you know, this very much started in a way that felt a little stunted and it felt a little underwhelming at times. Uh, and I know you, you might be saying your to yourself, well, like, hold on, like, how can you say that there were some bad segments and this is a great feud? Uh, it's exactly because of the direction that it's headed in, um, recently, um, where the real turning point was that match where after that match where, you know, MJF cheated, uh, this should have been a very black and white kind of feud, a uh, very clear cut, uh, you know, face heel feud uh, where MJF came out last week, you know, and this is not a review show, um, but I will be devoting um, an entire kind of like short episode uh, to uh, that MJF promo. And I'm going to have a guest and we're going to uh, kind of dive into some aspects of it that you might not expect. Uh, so, so do watch out for that. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing you guys that. Um, but to go back to this CM Punk and MJF feud, there, there have been times where, uh, you know, particularly the, that's Britt Baker stuff and a couple other lines where things have felt a little bit forced um, and a little bit awkward. And you look back on that and how talented these two guys are, you know, especially, uh, you know, CM Punk had a wonderful, you know, announcing that dog collar match, wonderful promo in the center of the ring not too long ago. MJF followed it up with this, you know, tour de force. Uh, and, you know, as you might wonder, I do have a bit of a theater background and uh, that very much felt like a, a one man show uh, better than uh some one man shows that I've seen, uh, that MJF promo. And I, I don't think it was, uh, it wasn't lost on me that, you know, that he was wearing all black, uh, you know, very much in a kind of off Broadway, uh, kind of setup with his identifying, um, Burberry scarf, you know, that's very much like a, uh, community theater kind of thing. I, I thought it was an obvious reference. It may have not been, but in any case, uh, this feud is becoming something where this should be pretty clear cut at cut. And suddenly uh, MJF has in injected this human element where even if the like dumb, obvious thing, which to be frank, you know, you always do have to worry about a little bit with AEW is that they can sometimes be a little bit obvious in the storylines. Uh, and so I understand, you know, the, uh, the idea, you know, just that it will end up being a whole trick and MJF will come out and hit CM Punk with a chair or whatever and be like, I fooled you, that's all fake. Uh, you know, even if that happens, uh, a segment like that is something that will be pretty forgettable. Uh, that promo is something that really has forever altered uh, the MJF character uh, for AEW. Um and for me, you know, I already liked MJF uh, in the ring and, you know, on the mic. But for me, uh, that promo that he gave really did, uh, it, it transcends the sport for me. And again, I'll talk more about that in a separate show just because I, I don't want to hijack. <laughs> I don't want to hijack uh, y'all's podcast uh, since, again, you know, you readers are, or listeners, I mean, uh, you are part of what makes the show. Uh, you know, so engaging. Uh, so please, again, nextfilleraw.com um, dot com or nextfilleraw at gmail dot com. Uh, you know, please do uh message right in. Um, so so back to November. Uh, you know that first confrontation just between Punk and MJF. Uh, and you know, just immediately it seems obvious. You know, you're like, oh right. You know, it's like. He's CM Punk's doing this anti-bully thing. Like he just cheated to beat Darby. You know, it, it made sense that CM Punk would come out. And then a few weeks in, you know, things seem a little bit off. You know, we can clearly see, you know, these guys are, you know, could be at the absolute peak of their powers, but like, you know, kind of like, why are things just kind of stalling out here? Uh, or, or even feeling, you know, a little bit stymied, you know, at times. Um, but the feud that we see now 
uh, it's become much more about CM Punk's legacy at this point than uh, what it seemed to me at first, which was, you know, CM Punk's going to go out and he's going to make MJF a star. Uh, you know, we're seeing that, in fact, you know, MJF already is a star. Uh, and maybe it's CM Punk that is the one that actually has something to, to prove in this feud now. Um, and I, one thing I want to bring up, especially, is just that, uh, you know, how often are they doing these references to Piper in Portland, you know, for this dog collar match? Uh, but what about Raven? Uh, that actually wasn't intentional. Uh, but what about Raven? Uh, and how is that is his historic feud of CM Punk's uh, not been mentioned yet? And I do wonder for a company that prides itself in history so much and a CM Punk that prides himself in uh, history so much, uh, I do wonder how that match might be referenced and uh, just what might uh, come of this feud, I guess, the, the result of the feud. Um, and I do think that there may be quite a bit there uh, in that Raven match, uh, again, you know, go back and, you know, kind of look, look at some footage of that feud. Um, there are some things you can glean from that, where if that's the direction that they could head in, uh, that would, would make for some really exciting stuff. Um, so I, am, uh, you know, things are now just upended, you know, with that MJF promo last week. Um, and you know, this is, again, this is not a review show. So again, yeah, you know, I am uh, really excited to see, you know, what is the last uh, segment in this feed that we'll get before the match on Sunday. Um, I actually, I get chills thinking about it. I'm not, not, not embarrassed to admit. Um, so send those AEW Mark emails away. That's the next pillar, AEW at gmail.com. Um, I imagine, you know, we'll hear uh, from Keith Lee and, uh, you know, in fact, um, you know, I saw that Brian Danielson quote. Um, what podcast was that? Oh, it was on the ringer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw that Brian Danielson quote uh, just about how EW doesn't have any writers. Uh, but that's weird because obviously Keith Lee was in the writing room of Frazier, or at least that's what his promos sound like. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> or I see him on Twitter. You know, he uses the word uh, plethora on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, I, and really I'm all for it, you know, cause Keith Lee, Keith Lee, that's right. Uh, Keith Lee, I don't want you to sit there and think to yourself, uh, you know, look like, you know, you use the word erudite, like who are you to judge, you know? And I get that. And by the way, folks, uh, we'll have that revolution preview right after this. Uh, I, I get what you're saying, you know, but here's the thing, Keith. Frasier was a huge show. And you know, everyone in wrestling wants to make the next Four Horsemen, but what about the next Frasier right there on AEW? You got Arn Anderson. That casting is obvious. Daphne, boom, Jamie Hayter. She's right there. Or, you know, Niles, that's going to be the really tough one. Well, you know, and Eddie, but, you know, Niles, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I'm hoping some readers might write in if you have any ideals about that, just because, you know, Niles is the guy that can kind of out Frazier Frazier sometimes. Uh, and so we would need to make sure that we, the, whatever Niles you would pick, would need to out Frazier them. Uh, you could also go a totally different direction and do like a reverse My Fair Lady situation. Uh, that would be a great storyline for a wrestling company to use. These are all things, these are all ideas that are out there. And, uh, you know, I know, uh, you know, Keith, uh, you're a man that likes to, you're limitless. You like to think outside the box. Now that's an idea for you. And uh, I am, uh, you know, regardless, uh, I do hope, you know, I'm a huge fan. And uh, can't wait to see you at the ladder match this Sunday. Uh, so we'll be back just in a minute, folks, with our Revolution Preview. So uh, I have something pretty special for you guys, uh, and it's something that uh, a lot of folks have asked for, asked about in one way or another. 
Uh, and I did want to have, uh, just for this special occasion, uh, my wife, uh, Brett Irish, on the show. So, so welcome to uh, the next pillar. Thanks for having me, Blake. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, I've just, I've always, you know, of course, just having Brett's music in the show, a lot of folks uh, have really enjoyed that aspect of things. And I thought, you know, I have, I have had one person that emailed in and even thought that I should make her a, a co-host of the show. Um, and I know your interest level is nowhere near that kind of commitment, but what I, I did want to do since you are, you have a bit of a nascent interest in at least a E W, uh, is just on, you know, maybe every pay-per-view since, you know, there's only, you know, four to six of those a year or whatever. Uh, and hopefully only that much. I don't, would, don't want more. Um, I, uh, since there's only a few of those a year, uh, we can have you on the show here and just kind of go through the card since I think you might have some unique uh, predictions and insights. Well, yes. And I will say that I am very new to wrestling, but I do really enjoy AEW. And it's very pure because I came into it thinking I would hate it. And I've really grown to love a lot of aspects about it and a lot of the characters and it's become something that I really enjoy sharing with you yeah um and it's been you know super fun for me too just to kind of see you get into it you know to where uh the children's story you know that everyone heard at the top of the show uh you know that was very me um you know wanting to um, express that kind of dynamic of you kind of taking the show on, uh, you know, as your own. Um, and then, of course, all the great audio stuff that you did to it. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll go to the uh, the name of the day here, uh, which is talking about AEW uh, Revolution. Um, Brad had a nice idea, which is that they should uh, approach. Uh, Boda Brick uh, or Boda Box uh, as a uh, sponsor, their Red Volution blend. Which I'm drinking right now. Yeah, uh, which I think, yeah, Tony, you know, give him a call. Uh, that's right in the demo. We're you, having you know. a party for the pay-per-view on Sunday. Yes, that's true, yeah. With our friends, and I'm thinking I'm just going to get, like, four Boda Boxes of Red Volution. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a great idea, honey. Um, it'll, it'll certainly pair well with. Uh, I don't know if we want to do chicken wings in that case. That might that that's that seems like you'd also have to hand out the amaprazol, you know. Uh, but regardless, uh, um, uh, the pay per view this Sunday. Uh, so we'll just go through it match by match here, uh, just from uh, the the big ones to the little ones, because uh, you know I'm I'm kind of interested to see. Uh, who who of these people who you actually may not uh, know of, you know, because that's always interesting to me too. Um, so we have a main event, Hangman Page versus your guy Adam Cole. So I just want to get your general thoughts on it. So like, what do you think? I guess these are the two questions that I'll ask you for each match, which is just, uh, well, there'll be three questions actually. The first one will be. <laughs> Uh, do you guys hear how like patient she has to be with me on a on a regular basis? Uh, he talks a lot. Yeah, I I, I do. <laughs> uh, I think it's cute. Oh yeah, I would. Uh, <laughs> what one would hope so. Um, I uh, but yeah. So the the questions for each of these will be uh, number one, do you care? And then number two, uh. What do you think will happen? And then three, like what would what would you want to happen? So the, that's the I mean? question for each match. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like predict the result. Do you care? Predict the result essentially, and then you know what do you think about it, or like what would you do, or you know just kind of give your take on it if you well, have let's, any take. Let's start with the Adams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I care? Yes. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Adam Cole, I have kind of a crush on, and, like, 
we've talked about it and it's fine. It's a very pure crush. It's like a schoolgirl crush, you know. Yeah, I'm, I. I mean, I'm a, I'm no more threatened by Adam Cole than the next guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all I'll, I'll say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of realize I'm 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 done so if that's if that's gonna be on the table. But what Jen, yeah, I can't fault. Uh, but. Uh, I, I was very interested in a comment that you made the other night where uh, you said that Adam Cole is like your kind of Adam where Adam Page is maybe your mom's kind of Adam, like the kind of... Oh, yeah. My mom would totally have a crush on that Hangman Page. Like, it's like when she asked Tarzan at Disneyland for his autograph like five times, like he's that kind of guy. He's, yeah, r- rugged. And yeah. that's not my kind of guy. And that's fine. Um... But Adam Cole is my kind of guy because he's really sweet. Like, I wouldn't even say, like, I have a crush on his heart and, like, his mm-hmm. kind eyes. And, yeah, it's just really pure. I just feel like he's a really nice guy. Yeah. And I don't think that that maybe serves him well as a wrestler always. Right. Um. The, yeah, there are a lot of people that, you know, frankly don't take him uh, seriously or... Um, yeah, or, yeah, for various reasons, you know, uh, particularly his physique lately has been a pretty big target. Um, yeah, which is something dad like. bod, yeah, dad bod's hot. Yeah, so it, it, it is interesting. <laughs> I, I hope that, you know, some of you, some of you folks out there appreciate this, uh, kind of outside, uh, perspective, because I, I know I always do. Um, so what do you uh so you do care? What do you what what are you predicting though? Like what do what do you think will happen? I feel like they're gonna have Hangman Page win and try to carry out the Adam Cole thing a bit longer. Yeah. Just because he's so interesting and but they're not really willing I don't think that they're ready to like give him the championship yet. Right. Yeah. Well, I, and that's interesting to get your perspective on that. Um, because I think, uh, most people, you know, listening to this probably are assuming that Paige will go over just because, uh, though he hasn't had a long enough run with the, the belt yet, so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, it's interesting to get your perspective. Just will I be devastated? Also... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Tony, if you're listening, you know, sometimes it's okay to do the surprise change. I mean, but it's also like kind of part of Adam Cole's appeal, though, is like, you know, I like an underdog. Maybe I'm not ready for him to win yet. Right. You know, um, well, I mean, like maybe let's let it simmer and really he, I mean, to be fair to call him an underdog, he does have like six people that help him win matches is the only thing. Yes. So it is just nice to get that, uh, outside perspective. Uh, so Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, uh, you're, you're a big Britt Baker fan. Um, I am. What's, what's, what's your read on, on this one? But I'll say our daughter really likes Thunder Rosa though. So, so, yeah, and that's funny because I was going to say part of why I like Britt Baker is because I feel like she is such a positive female role model. Like, she's a fucking dentist also. Mm-hmm. Like, she... And a DMD, not not a DDS or a... I know, yeah. Yeah. And that's... So, our little baby... She's turning one in a month. This, I I swear to God, wrestling is her favorite thing. You know, I, I had hopes for her to, like, you know, be into playing the cello or something. Like, no, she's into wrestling, and I support her. And I'm like, you go, girl. And she, like, claps. She gets so into every match. She loves watching wrestling with her daddy. And... Like, Britt Baker is an, an amazing role model. Yeah. Um, um, But so is Thunder Rosa. 
for being, you know, like such a strong woman who really doesn't like she really has the vibe of not caring what anybody thinks about yeah. her. And I would say maybe that's something that Britt Baker lacks. Sure. So like they're really positive role models for girls in pretty different ways. Right. Um, so I mean, this match I'm I'm happy for our baby girl to watch and see positivity in them and I really will be happy if either one of them win. Nice. To be quite frank. Yeah. Um, and uh, s- same, actually, uh, at the result. Um, the next one is uh, this thing where we're recording this uh, late Tuesday. And uh, so it's this Jurassic Express, Red Dragon. Uh, just to wrap up this whole Adam Cole extended universe thing. Uh, we assume that the Young Bucks will win on Dynamite. That seems obvious, you know, to the point where, you know, as I was talking about earlier, you know, maybe it's a little too obvious. Uh, but I will say, like, uh, this is obviously going to be a very exciting match in Jurassic Express, Red Dragon, and the Young Bucks. Um, and for me, I think it's a great opportunity to put over Jurassic Express and continue a storyline. Um I've kind of been surprised at people who are were disappointed that they went into this direction. Um, but I think this is an example of how you can do a two birds with one stone thing and it really benefit both parties, worth all three parties, I guess, at this point. Um, so, honey, out of, like, Jurassic Express, you know, or the Adam Cole guys, like, what uh, wh- what's your reading on this? Well... I mean, I like that. Well, I'm, I'm rooting for Red Dragon, in this. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm. I think that Adam Cole's kind of drama between his friend groups is really, really troubling and really anxiety ridden for me because I know what that feels like. Like yeah. You know, you're trying to please everybody, and he's such a nice man. Um, But I kind of just have to go with anybody associated with Adam Cole on this one. Um, Jurassic Express, I, I... I do really like Jungle Boy. Um, I know our baby really loves Luchasaurus. He's one of her favorites. Um, but... Yeah, I, I, I got to stick with Adam Cole's guys. Sure. Despite whether they're in turmoil or not, you know. So so you think that they'll kind of further that storyline with them and the Young Bucks with the tag belts and yeah. Jurassic Express. Well, yeah. Um, and that could happen, you know, where, uh, you know, maybe Christian Cage turns on them earlier than everyone expects and it's a Jungle Boy Christian Cage match and – um. Yeah, that could very well happen. Um, So that's interesting. Uh, This one I'm interested to hear what you have to say about uh, Jade Cargill uh, versus Ty Conti. I'm I'm honestly all about Jade Car Jade Cargill. Mm Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. I mean, what's not to like? Um, I I just think she's fucking cool. I will say the uh, Ty Conti is like the other is one of the two ladies that does the like handshake with the butts touching thing oh just fuck yeah which okay. i know you really like uh, um yeah i was so gonna it, start doing that with my best friend okay. yeah it's yeah i i would yeah that um, that's thank you for reminding me of that but i still i'm with mm-hmm. jade sure i understand i i just i just think that jade's a fucking badass yeah uh, that's as uh that adds up i um friends with Shaq, right yes yes yeah. um this is a big one uh m j f and c m punk who uh that uh you you are one of three people who i know uh cried a little bit during that that m j f promo this week i actually cried yeah 
So before that promo, I really, really respected MJF as an actor. And like I said this to you, like I I think that he could be a very successful dramatic actor. Um but it was always that's kind of like always as like how I saw him I was like oh you're just like so good at being a character and that's really interesting and you like you're so talented at that and then like also have like the wrestling skills to back it up um but you know you're silly he's a silly guy and then right. after that promo I I mean he had me in tears and I really believed it and I I think that it was sincere and I think like you've showed me things that have backed that up that it's sincere and like I don't know like we have ADHD in our family and it really resonated with Mm me um and I've always really liked CM Punk and respected him and I know that he's you know your favorite and like you wrote that piece about him and I think he's a really amazing guy and so I was team CM Punk while respecting MJF but then after that promo I'm I'm MJF like I I don't want that guy to cry anymore like yeah (laughs) he he got my heart (laughs) yeah and I and I think that's what was so interesting to me just about that segment is that it took a you know particularly after you know mjf had cheated it took this very black and white situation and made it very unclear yet uh in a very short amount of time uh in terms of like who is the obvious person uh to root for well and he won me over and yeah he made it he made it gray area like you know like do we condone the idea of cheating if somebody comes from behind from this you know troubled background or viewing their hero in this complicated way like what do we you know it really makes you question like what do you allow of a person yeah what's you okay with a person like right what do you excuse i don't know right um this next one is a uh another uh well a fun one for us to talk about which is brian danielson and john moxley uh having this uh bro match basically um what's a bro match uh, I guess it's like a I, I this isn't an actual thing. I'm really just going off the cuff here. I guess what I was trying to combine would be a bromance and a match. I love it. That was a bro match. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is really like they might make out. I, well, no, but you know that would be fun. Yeah. So I should mention, you know, that other than Adam Cole, you kind of have a thing for. More specifically, I guess, John Moxley's chest hair. Honey, it's because it reminds me of yours. Well, I appreciate you saying that, but <laughs> I, I really would like you to write a song about Blake that. Blake Hickman has great chest hair, much like John Moxley. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, we, there's probably <laughs> some similar genetic makeup, I'm sure. Um, yeah. 23 and me, John Moxley, please. Uh, you might be my half brother. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, uh, what 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 do you think will happen here? Like, do you think it will result in them, you know, having this moment at the end where they come together, or is this gonna go sour? Like, what what's your what's your take on it? I think that they're gonna come together. I think that they, I mean, there's so much respect between them for one another. Oh, it's okay. Oh, there. Uh, I I think for me, again, you know, it's just always nice when um, they can come up with a, again a storyline like this, which is just like I can't really recall the last time you know we had two people having a match to see 
if the other one wanted to make a dojo with them. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, this is another one that you might have a couple, a couple thoughts about, which is uh, Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston. Well, if I remember correctly, Chris Jericho said some kind of like not quite okay things. Yeah. In his promo, right? Yeah, I I think um I mean this is not my place to have this discussion. Uh but yeah, the word thug um its use yeah. uh, is questionable. I didn't think that the, was I didn't think that was cool at all. It begs a question. Yeah. Um absolutely. Um I mean Chris Jericho is I don't know. I know that he's like fun and like is he though? <laughs> ha- has like but he has like the history yes. and like people history think people think fun. that he's like a funny caric- caricature of, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um I don't coming from somebody who didn't grow up with wrestling, I don't really find it funny or appealing. I'm kind of just like, yeah. why is this guy here? What is he doing? Uh, this guy's kind of lame. And there there are a few things like that um, in AEW where I do wonder if someone just like you that maybe they've never checked out wrestling before, just like what they think of certain things like this. Um, and while we're on the subject, uh, oh, this is just going to go into the next – match seamlessly um what do you think about sting i i know you like darby allen but um i love darby allen can you can you maybe more of see the appeal uh of a sting where it's kind of not a i'm i'm where it's like chris jericho is kind of hanging on to something where it's like a sting is very obviously already taking a, a step back so to speak um I mean, I think that Darby Allen, you know, Darby Allen like plays to the punk appeal, um, and I think that Sting like actually adheres to like the punk state of mind of like, yeah, taking a back seat when you need to, and like he's he's always struck me as he's a little bit of an outsider. Um, he's not he's not like doing things based on his own ego he, yeah and that's really what like being a punk is about like darby allen and sting like really epitomize that i feel whereas yeah like chris jericho to me is just like commercial wrestler like how much longer can i hang on to this kind of thing yes definitely um so i really like sting um I think that it's super cool that he's teamed up with Darby Allen, who I love. Love Darby Allen's song. Love that he wrestled in Portland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's something I forgot to mention in that segment just about the history of Portland is that uh, Darby Allen was uh, through here uh, for a time. Um, Blue-collar uh, wrestling. Um, the last match I'll ask you about um, – is just uh, this face of the revolution uh, ladder match. And I am fairly certain that out of all these people, the only person you actually know about is Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that does, that that's going to be a nice question because earlier in the show, uh, there was kind of some discussion of, of uh, just whether – if it's if, if if you're able to take kind of Orange Cassidy like seriously, so you know he's in this match where eventually he's gonna get a shot at that title that Sammy Guevara has. What like do you feel like like how as someone that's just kind of watching AEW for the first time, like how would you feel like uh, seeing him win like an actual championship? And part of the question is, like, do I take him seriously? Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah. like, or, yeah, I guess just, like, what, what what, comes to mind when you think about the idea of Orange Cassidy with a, a championship, I guess. I would say that, like, the arc that I've had personally with Orange Cassidy actually really mirrors the arc that I've had with wrestling in general, like, as I've learned more about it. Where at first when I saw him, I was like, this is so on the nose. This is so stupid. 
And then, like, the more I got to know his character, I was like, it's so on the nose that, like, it's funny. And then it turned into, like, it's so on the nose that it's funny. And then, like, also it's, like, a commentary on something. And so, like, I... And that's how I've kind of, like, come to see wrestling. Like, I never really... I didn't even know that wrestling wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, that's like, right. I would say that, like, the feelings that I've had towards Orange Cassidy have, like, kind of mirrored that realization of, like, all of the layers that wrestling can have. Um, where it's like, okay, this is stupid. This is on the nose. Wait, is that, like, really clever? Oh, wait, right. that's genius. Oh, wait, now it's, like, kind of real, like, with the MJF right. stuff. Um, so that was kind of a crazy tangent, but no, I mean, it was great. Cause it really just kind of yeah. sums up the whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, perfectly honey, uh, without even trying. Um, so I hope, uh, you know, folks listening out there, I hope you've enjoyed this, you know, just kind of like getting to hear, um, you know, my wife who's contributed a lot of music to the show. Um, Thank you for listening. Yeah, just her thoughts on things. And uh, again, you know, as, as long as you folks are into it, I'm just going to tag these kind of 30-minute little things about each pay-per-view every few months. Um, yeah. Thanks so much, honey. I love you. I love you, too. Okay. Thank Good you. Good night, folks. <laughs>